Hi, this is Tom Vineski with the Times Leader. I'm here with Rick Koval of the North Branch Land Trust. We're on a steep, snow-covered, treacherous hillside. It's uh, hard for us to get to, but it's uh, pretty easy for a pair of coyotes to get to, and they've been doing that under this rock ledge here. They have a den, and uh, we're gonna get the camera down here and show you what it looks like, and this is gonna be the first uh, part of our winter series that Rick and I are gonna be doing, looking at mammal dens in the winter time. We're gonna have to see how many species we can find, show you their dens, show you why they made them, where they did. And maybe and, uh, some follow up, maybe some young. Yeah, and, and as we move through the winter here. So uh, we're gonna start the series with this uh, coyote den, and we have quite a few in store for you over the next couple of weeks. We're at this coyote den, and what's really amazing to me is when you read all the books about mammals of Pennsylvania, the Easter coyote, which is our largest carnivore, and kind of a newly uh, new visitor to Pennsylvania. This the Eastern coyotes weren't around 150 years ago. And they typically, what we read about these is they don't den until the breeding season, which the breeding season and when they give birth might not happen for another month or so, but they're using this conglomerate boulders and there's passageways underneath. And you can see right here, there's a large entrance to their den. And there's at least two coyotes using this. And we suspect, we were told by the Pennsylvania Game Commission that this is going to be a, a birthing den for the Eastern Coyote, which is really remarkable. And there's several passageways, as with the research says, that coyotes will use an entrance to a den, but there's always one or two extra passageways, escape routes, that are usually hidden. And as Tom will show you, there's all passageways underneath these boulders. Really remarkable. And if we kind of get a close-up of this, you can see how the trail itself is really worn. And if you look at the edge of the rock, you'll even see coyote fur. I can add to that, but I just don't know what kind of angles you want. Wait. Okay, the den that we're looking at is a boulders, talus of rocks, conglomerate boulders. And there's passageways underneath that. It's probably go maybe 20 to 30 feet in. And look at this entrance. There's a worn path right here, actually several trails leading to it. And here's the entrance to the den. And it's at least uh, maybe two feet by three feet. Enough to even fit a black bear or a porcupine. Coyotes are large animals. They're up to 60, 65 pounds. And so they need quite a large hole. And, but the, remarkably, they could actually go into smaller passageways as well. Okay. Now there are several types of animals that use den in the winter. Gray fox, porcupines, raccoons, skunks, opossums, eastern coyotes. How do we know this is an eastern coyote den and not a den of a porcupine? And we see common signs of porcupines in this area. Well, uh, confirmed by the Pennsylvania Game Commission, the tracks are obvious. However, it's snowing right now and the tracks are kind of muted, but the color of the fur itself, and there's fur at the entrance of this. They're large animals, and as they enter and exit the den, well, the top of their, air, their back are going to grab, fur is going to grab on these rocks. So if you pull the fur out and identify the fur, you could tell if, if it was a porcupine, it'd be a quill. If it's a skunk or a possum, it'll be a different color. But well, a coyote fur is a distinct color and distinct patterns as well, as opposed to a red fox and a gray fox. Uh, we were talking about the uh, coyotes surviving in the winter when we were down at the den site. We found this deer carcass. It wasn't killed by coyotes. It's been here a long time. It could have been uh, uh, a roadkill that wandered up here and, and died. We don't know, but this is something that's helping to sustain the coyotes right now. And all and animals in the dead of winter, and all animals. You see, there's tons of tracks around here of all animals, you know, from coyotes to looks maybe fox, small birds. And we're seeing black cat, cat chickadees. Uh, they're feeding on the fat and the meat. So this will provide a lot of food for the entire winter. So this is all consumed. And, and the one thing that it is impressive about the coyotes feeding on this, this is frozen solid. Yeah. And they, they, their jaws are powerful enough that they can actually gnaw that what meat is left on here. They can gnaw it off the bone. And in some cases, they are, they're eating the bone as well, the ribs, and uh, just gnaw that stuff right off and, and survive the winter doing stuff like this. And the little scraps, we don't even see scraps. They're all consumed by right. the other animals, the birds, the blue jays, the black cap chickadees, the titmice, and the downy woodpeckers. The chickadees are flying right into this right now. They're so, so hungry. There's about a foot of snow here, and it's snowing now. And this is winter survival.